So we've just started the clock on the living building challenge performance period, and that means we have to operate at net zero energy, net zero water for a year. We also have to do a number of other things, including 35% of the site has to be in edible landscaping or food production. There are a couple different reasons why Williams decided to pursue Living Building Challenge. One of them is in the name. We were looking for a challenge. We were really looking to push the boundaries of what sustainable building means on a college campus. We wanted to have a building that would not just be a place in which learning would occur, but a building that would actually be and assistance to learning itself. When you're walking by this building, you notice certain things about it. There are solar panels all over the place. There are ponds out here that are rain gardens. We have downspouts that go to an underground cistern, and then it comes back into the building and is filtered multiple times through small micron filters and UV filters. We have a lot of windows thinking about how we can reduce the amount of energy we use with the lights. We use composting toilets. A lot of what is used in the building is, I'd say, normal traditional technology in terms of insulation and triple pane windows, but we just dialed it up to 11. We're trying to train people as much as we can for this building specifically, thinking about, yes, turning off your lights and turning off your computer, but using a power strip when we're washing dishes in the kitchen, thinking about not using very much water. This building's not just a showpiece. It's an educational piece, but it's also a place where staff, faculty have offices, we have classroom space, we have kitchen space that students use all the time, and it's a place where people really want to come and be. What this building asks of us is to work in collaboration. So there has to be some intentionality and desire from all areas of campus and all people who are using the building. There are a lot of people here at a lot of different hours of the day, and that involves energy use, that involves water use, but it's also what we wanted in the building. We could meet the living building challenge, basically by shutting the doors for a year, but that would be the worst of all possible ways to proceed. The building is so much larger than the physical place in a lot of ways. Really the importance of it is the ripple effect and the things that we learn and the things that we can share with the broader community and the things that our students learn and that they take with them when they leave Williams. If we find that we can't actually meet the living building challenge on our first try, it'll be a disappointment. But if we learn a great deal, about how people behave and what motivates them, the exercise will not have been a failure. Living Building Challenge has part of their mission or vision statement that says, what if every single act of design and construction can make the world a better place? A really high bar to be sure, but something that's great for us all to strive for.